am I supposed to intro this video when my hair is such a mess? Oh, if only there was a better way. There we go. Okay, I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here today. Today we're working on part 12 of the Swordbreaker build. Now, uh, in this episode, we're going to be moving on to uh, a pretty challenging part of it, which is going to be doing the fluting of the handle. So carving those round things that wrap around the handle. They won't actually wrap around it. They'll be carved into it. It's going to involve some math, some sketching, and a heck of a lot of hand finaling. So, let's get into it. So in the last episode, we did a bedded tang, which means that we covered the guard and the tang and the pommel in paste wax and then filled it up with epoxy so it has a perfect seat in there now. So it's time to go ahead, put this thing in the vise, take it all apart. We're probably going to have to use a little bit of heat to get it apart, but after that we'll be able to take it off and on and have it indexed perfectly every single time, which is really, really cool. That pommel came right off. That is really good. I did use a pretty thick layer of paste wax, so ugh, nope, we're going to have to use some heat. That's just fine. I was expecting that. Let's grab the torch. So we're heating up the tang so that it'll melt the paste wax on the inside and we'll be able to pull off that handle. There we go. Woo. Oh wow, we were really on the tang there a little bit. Some of that paste wax must have worn off and so it was actually epoxied onto the tang. It must have been contacting there so the first time that I fit it on, it wore off the paste wax, but that's of no concern now. Now what we have is a perfect fitting handle every single time. We can now move on to the fluting part of today's episode, which is the main event. Let's do it. All right, guys, so the process for fluting this uh, starts with a lot of layout work, and the layout work is the foundation for getting good flutes. We're gonna do a four flute handle, which means that there will be four lumps wrapping their way around this thing. And I'm gonna use the method that Kyle Royer details in one of his videos uh, that he does about doing a fluted mammoth ivory handle. I'm doing it a little bit different. He did eight flutes. I'm gonna do four on this one, but the basic process is the same. It's gonna start off with transferring this onto a piece of thin plywood and then building a mandrel around it so that we can chuck this up in the lathe and basically get grid lines running all the way down the blade, and then we'll use a height gauge to scribe height marks all the way around, and we'll basically make a grid over this entire handle, so we'll be able to sketch lines in pencil that run across it, and then carve those in with a triangle file. So let's go ahead and transfer this thing onto a piece of plywood. Cardboard, brass, I'm not seeing a piece of plywood that would work very well. Here we go. This will work. I'm going to go ahead and cut this circle out. Okay, this thing has been dried on there. I'm gonna go ahead and, there's no reason for me to scrub around. We're just gonna go to the bandsaw. Alright guys, we've got our grid laid out on here. We've got 
eight lines running across it. Only four of those matter. The ones that are on the uh, very edges here are the ones that actually matter. The other ones are just for reference. Uh, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines scribed running the length of the handle. And those are gonna be our reference points for uh, how far the down travel is going to be for each flute. It's now time to take a pencil and scribe in the lines running all the way down of where exactly we want to carve in the bottom of our grooves. Flutes can either go one of two ways. They can have hollows carved in for the flutes or it can be a uh, like round lumpy flutes like we did on the cavalry saber. But on the cavalry saber we only did one flute going around. This is going to be four flutes going around at the same time. So a little bit different. Should look really really nice. It's going to be kind of tight. We'll be able to press that wire wrap in and make it look really really cool. So take a pencil and uh, work our way around. All right, we've got ourselves one fluted African black wood handle. Look at that, it looks fantastic. I'm very sorry I used that voice. It won't happen again in this episode. I can't control it. One thing we did notice is that the sides here are just, a, they're too wide. The pommel sits right there and it's just a bad, bad transition. So I'm gonna bring that down a pretty good ways. I'm probably gonna take at least an eighth inch off of either side and try to even that out a little bit. Uh, Cause right now it's just way, way too wide. So I'm gonna taper that down and then reflute that part of it. I'll be able to move up the grits. I'll be able to deepen out those grooves before we're able to move on to the wire wrap. Now right now it's very, very roughly filed. Everything is super, super rough. There's a lot of facets carved into it and we don't want that. We want to smooth it all out. So the first step today is going to be taking a finer file and kind of smoothing out any of the lumps and the flats and all that stuff. We want to get rid of those. We want it to look nice. Before we do that though, I want to let you know, Alec is not dead. He's in Texas. Montana is better than Texas, by the way. Boom. Take that, Texas. I'm just going to go ahead and get to work on this while people harass me. Just, it's gonna be utter harassment from the Texans here. We get to work on this sword breaker handle. Let's do it. Now it's important to get a good buff all the way over the piece, which means that you need to rotate it very quickly. In other news, this is looking quite good. I'm gonna go over it again uh, to get into the bottoms a little bit more, but they don't really need to be all that nice because we're covering this thing in wire. So really the only part that is important is having the basic shape down nice and uh, nice and clean. I did the buffing basically to be able to check for scratches because it highlights scratches a lot better than pretty much any other method. Uh, and I'm not really seeing too many big dings or dents or anything like that. I see a couple areas that I need to touch up, but we're almost there.
All right, we've got that handle fluted. It's looking pretty dang sweet. It's, it's very fun to spin around because it, it looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the guard now. I'm gonna start off by finishing out the inside of this ring. Uh, still waiting on the wire to show up so I can actually do the wire wrap and the Turk's head on there. I gotta get this guard prepped and ready for Alec to be able to do some gold wire inlay when he gets back from Texas. Okay, now that I've cleaned out the inside of the D-ring, I'm gonna go ahead and add the fullers that uh, separate out that last little pentagon from the end on these quillions. I'm gonna do that with a round file here. Uh, hopefully it's got a fine enough tip. I'm gonna have to pull back that shoulder a little way on both of them, uh, just because this file otherwise isn't gonna work. We're also gonna have to thin down the tip of that a little bit. It'll offset a little ways there, so we're gonna be thinning down that very end. I'll probably start off doing that and then move into doing the fuller all the way around in a very similar transition to that, or this, or that. As you guys have seen, I've been carving that fuller around this part of the end of that quillion. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up with this diamond burr here. I think it's gonna be small enough that I can get in there and get a nice radius all the way around. Should leave a pretty decent surface finish. So that diamond burr did a fantastic job of cleaning out and smoothing out the inside of that little fuller in there. I'm gonna take this rubberized abrasive disc thing here and try to go around and clean up the inside a little bit more because it's still a fairly rough finish. We'll see how it works out. Okay, that worked pretty dang good. I'm happy about that. I'm gonna go ahead and try to finish off the uh, this face on the end of that quillion right before that transition. It's still kind of covered in file marks and I don't want that. It's looking pretty dang nice. I'm gonna have to hand finish the tops of those just cause this thing can't quite get in there and the file marks are just a little bit too deep. We're almost to the really, really fun part. So, we just gotta hold that a little bit longer before we get to the really, really fun part. So I just said that we weren't quite ready for the fun part. I lied, we are ready for the fun part. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the fun part by chamfering these edges. Now that is to create a 45 degree angle to break that 90 degree edge that we have here right now. It's gonna be a nice line that'll run all the way around the guard. I'm gonna do that all with a hand file before I move on to the, the rest of the fun processes on this. Righty ho, I've been filing on this for a good bit of time now. And I sent a picture of it to Alec, he's in Texas right now, and he mentioned that he thought that these are looking a little bit thick. And after thinking about it, I think I agree. I'm gonna take them down just a little bit. I think they're just a little bit too blocky right now, so I'm gonna take them down just like the smallest possible amount on the belt sander, and then get back to filing in those facets, making them look nice. Let's go to the grinding room.
Okay, done plenty of work on this. I'm still gonna need to clean it up with hand sanding and stuff like that, but I think it's time for a little bit of a break. Welcome to our new segment, Mix Nut Trick Shots. Welcome to the first segment of Mix Nut Trick Shots. I'm your host, Will Stelter. This is gonna be nuts. We're starting off with an almond because of its aerodynamicness. This is the ceiling bounce. Yes! Yes! Call this one the wall bounce. Hey! I call this one around the world. Mmm. So good. That's it for today's episode of Mix Nut Trick Shots. I'll cash you on the next one. See you later. Wow, that was really good. Thanks, thanks, Will. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to the next episode. I don't know about you guys. I guess I'll probably find out in the comment section. But uh, I thought that was that was pretty good. Very impressive skills. Very different skill set. Pretty nuts. How's it going guys? I just got back from a trip to Texas doing some business things and some fun things, a little bit of hunting, a little collaboration with Bobby Duke, so stay tuned for that. I don't have my keys. You know, there is nothing quite like the mountains of Montana. There's nothing quite like this spot. I'm so happy to be home. Super excited to see this. So what on earth? Will! 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 Will? Will! That's not good. Will! Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Will? Files! The files! Ah! Ah! He needs coffee. He needs coffee quick. He's clearly in delirium. There's been far too much filing and hand sanding. We're coming, Will. We're gonna help you out. Will! Will! Look! Hey, buddy! I need you to focus. Look. Hey, look at me! Look at me! Look at me! There we go. There we go, look, it's, it's all good. You okay? Hey, 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 Will, look at me. How's it going? It's all good, look, you got coffee. Keep you warm. You're all good, you're all good. 220, 400. This is the sword breaker? Oh. This thing's looking awesome. <laughs> Holy moly. Will, I, I just gotta say, you know, I'm pleased that you're up and about. I'm so sorry for, for doing that to you. This thing is looking phenomenal. Thank you. It's actually been a pretty pretty good week of <clears throat> of, uh, of work. We got that handle totally fluted out, getting the guard refined right now. It's gonna look pretty dang swell when it's all, all finished out. Next steps, got quite a bit of guard and pommel work left. Oh yes, and something I was thinking about that we're gonna address is we're gonna address maybe lightening out this pommel, finding mm -hmm. a way to take some weight out of it so we can move the balance just a little bit more forwards. So what you're saying is that you hate it. <laughs> that is not what I'm saying, but what I am saying is as we end this video, we would like to not only thank Will for his phenomenal hard work, we'd also like to thank today's sponsor for helping make all of this possible. Today's sponsor is Paragon, and part of what I was doing in Texas was going to the factory to see the progress that they are making on another one of our heat treating ovens. It is a behemoth, and I wanna show you a few clips from that, and I also wanna ask that for your next kiln or heat treating oven, you go and buy from Paragon. There's a link in the description below. They make phenomenal products, they custom make products, and we are super excited to have them as a sponsor. Here are some clips from my trip to their factory in Texas. So I've stopped in at Paragon to have a look at the next heat treating oven that they are building us. Look at that monster of an oven. It's almost taller than me. That is so awesome. They're putting the finishing touches on it. I cannot believe this thing. That is one hell of an oven. So thank you, Paragon for letting me come and see this beautiful piece of equipment that you are building us. We cannot wait to make some crazy swords with it. Thank you guys for watching, and a big, big thank you to Will for the great work on the sword breaker while I was gone this last week. We're super excited, lots to come this week, so thank you, thank you, thank you. See you in the next one, bye-bye.